John's studio and I saw that he had an old series of these large angels. And some of our work is very similar in style and such. And we started talking about, you know, the similarities in our themes and the differences as well, how our process is and how, how we approach the subject. The title of the show, Contemplating Heaven and Earth, my approach is more from a spiritual side into art. And John's approach is more art history, even though my pieces also cross over with um, works in art history. Like, yeah, and all of my work is really going from, they're all sort of appropriated from older paintings as the inspiration and then redone. And so part of what I was interested in, um, I've always been more of a contemporary artist and more of a non-objective artist. And my interest was to see you know, go back to this older art and see, you know, if I felt that it could be relevant still. Because there's always been a question in my mind, um, you know, more traditional representational art is kind of what I grew up with and I had some talent for, but I had given it up a long time ago. And um, there was a part of me that wondered if that was kind of like a waste, are you wasting a skill or a talent or something like that? And so the idea of going back and kind of redoing these, you know, older, you know, more Renaissance images or other paintings, but doing them in a, with a more contemporary sort of um, layer. So we both found ourselves looking at pieces and reimagining them in a contemporary way. One of mine is, has, is based off of inspired, I guess, by Picasso's old guitarist. And, and then um, another a sculpture, the Pieta. And, um, and I think the angel theme was a common thing we both had. Um, the use of text mm -hmm. over the figures, um, I thought was really interesting that we both kind of shared that. And so that was something that I thought kind of made it a natural fit. And yours is a very more laborious painstaking process. Yeah, the, you, the text on mine is actually branded using branding irons and burnt right into the paper. And you created those branding and, irons. Yeah, the, yeah I'm kind of... <laughs> and when I thought of the branding, it was like an immediate thing where it's like, yes, I've got it. That's what it needs because it brought back in the text, which I've always liked working with. And more importantly, the burning into the paper was something that just... Um, you know, formally was something that I thought would be so cool. And it adds a um, sort of weight to the work. My text is stenciled and obviously very painterly um, and not, not branded, that's for sure. Us deciding to do the show together, um, that was something we had had kind of in the back of our minds for a while because we knew there was some similarities um, with the ideas we were working with. It's really more of an intuitive process and it was really just kind of, it was very easy to lay out together. the work and try to figure, you know, how things fit in the space and how they related to each other. So that was, mm -hmm. that I could do in my sleep. Yes. So we love the Performing Arts Center and what the city does, you and um, everyone that's involved and the, you know, from these videos to the artist reception, it's just top notch. You can see more of my work at ChasingLightArtStudio.com, um, but Shauna Hatton Art on Instagram, um, um, or come to the studio at 140 South Main Studio C. Lots of work up there. And um, I'm usually there Wednesday through Saturday and some Sundays. And for me, you can see my, I have my website, which is SeanSousa.com. Um, Instagram and Facebook, I'm pretty active on. I don't show a lot locally. Um, I have a gallery in Columbus. My longer term goal is just to keep trying to get the work out there. I just think it's so rich, the colors and the, the branding, especially um, if you see the video, which is on your website, of how you did the process. It's fascinating. Um, and I love the... Um, just the colors and the, the movement and such, mostly, that's my favorite part. Her work is obviously more expressionistic and um, 
And one of the things that I really enjoy is that there's a freshness, um, the work that I find most successful, there's a freshness to it and it's more spontaneous and um, that I really enjoy. I did a commission for um, somebody um, of angels, of an angel, Angel Gabriel, and I did a lot of research for that. I mean, really, if we had a show of angels, it would be pretty terrifying. <laughs> Even though these are angels and things that are, um, you know, a lot of people think is real positive things. Um, you know, when you read the Bible, the Bible's not always uh, happy. <laughs> There's some heavy stuff <laughs> in there. And there is a weight to um, a lot of what's there. Yeah, we've laughed thinking about what it would look like if we really had what the descriptions are. I'm working on, well, I, I'm not done with my series on um, women. And so I'm continuing um, that. But art for me is a way of processing a lot of times, and I think it's a healthy outlet for everybody. And so this one, I think it's gonna be called Head and Heart, and it's about the mind and memories, some tough stuff. As far as angels go, um, the um, winged warrior probably is one of the most meaningful to me, and I, I um, had was inspired back when I studied in Italy and was, went to the Louvre for the first time, the Nike of Samothrace, the winged, winged Nike, she's, she just is so exquisite. And then I reimagined her uh, as a winged warrior, kind of a female David. And, um, and so she's dedicated to all the female warriors I know. I had planned for her to be a uh, painting, and, uh, but most of my work I start with charcoal and um, um, I just, liked the effect of that on the linen. I think I'm going to continue and have some more of her. Also the madre, the mother and child, that too was very, and that's the most recent one in this series. But I thought of that, um, I've been wanting to do that uh, for over a year. And then it just, once I started working on it, because I had a clear idea, both of those, when I have a clear idea, you know, after doing sketches and just a lot of ruminating and, um, you know, writing and exploring what these, what I want it to look like, it comes really fast and furious. Even a really big painting like that, I mean, that was less than two weeks and um, working on it just, you know, two to four hours a day. Well, I'm currently working on a series um, which is much more abstract. It's more um, collage based. Um, very textural, more non-objective. Um, it's, it's, um, it's called Chaos Fields. And basically, they're, it's, the, it's more like a vision of the world through your brain. <laughs> That's the way I envision it. It reminds me kind of of a dream. If, in, like, yeah, there's, it's very fragmented, and there's um, a lot of text in it. It's, it's both very... I, yeah. For me, I'm interested in it both formally, the texture and the way it's made is very important, um, but also it has a lot of um, imagery and text and things that are very subjective or suggestive. I think it's very playful, but it reminds me of a dream too because it's very, because of the colors, but also the pop imagery that you have in there. Yeah, I try to have certain things will draw you in that are more kind of universally, you know, playful or, or things that people can identify with. But then as you get in, you can spend a lot of time just looking at all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And I think the meaning of the work is I, I push and kind of go in a direction, but um, each person is going to come away with things that are more based on their personal experience. And that's part of what the works are supposed to be because I've always thought that you know really good artwork is kind of like a mirror where it allows people to kind of see themselves in a way and so the work is suggestive in that way instead of being literally saying something it's suggesting things.